One of the distros that I always take a look at when they have a new release is Elementary OS. Elementary OS, I'm a big fan of. Now, I personally don't use Elementary OS. It's not a distribution made for somebody like me, more of a power user. But for really casual users, especially people that don't do much with their computers, they're the kinds of people that just open up a web browser and browse Facebook, you know, watch YouTube, things like that. They really never install extra pieces of software. They don't really customize their desktop in any sort of way you know think about you know if you got uh, elderly parents or grandparents you know those kinds of people elementary OS is perfect and I've had really good success installing elementary OS on machines for those kinds of people so elementary just had a big release they just released version 6.0 and today I'm gonna take a quick first look at elementary 6.0 codenamed Odin so what I want to do is I want to run through the installation process inside a virtual machine because Elementary OS does have a rather unique installer, an installer they've been working on for a while, and it's rather simple. First, select a language. By default, English is chosen for me, and that's correct. I'm just going to click Select, and then uh, what kind of English? United States English, so select again. And then Keyboard Layout English US is correct, and then what kind of keyboard layout, whether it's default or Dvorak, Cole Mac, things like that. I'm, I'm using a standard keyboard. And then what do we want to do with the disk? Do we want to erase the entire disk and give the entire disk to elementary OS? Or do we want to do manual partitioning? And then they have a, another option here, try demo mode. I'm assuming that's where we can just test it out as a live environment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the disk and give the entire 25 gig virtual hard drive of this virtual machine to elementary OS. Then I'm going to click erase disk and install. And then we need to select the device, the disk to install to. There's only one virtual hard drive in this virtual machine. So that's the only one that is an option for me. And then I'm going to click erase and install. Then it's going to ask, do we want to encrypt the drive? By default, it expects you to encrypt your hard drive. If this was a real machine, I might do that, especially if it's a laptop, um, because, you know, you could have that device stolen and then somebody could get into your machine, especially if you didn't have a super secure password and steal, you know, important data from you. But for purposes of this video, I'm actually not going to encrypt this virtual machine. And then the installation process here will continue. This typically takes just a few minutes. I'll pause the video. I'll be back once this is done. The installation process there took about five minutes and then it automatically rebooted itself. And then we get uh, more screens about selecting our language. I don't know why when you select a language in the installer that it doesn't remember it upon reboot. But once again, when you first log in after the installation, it asks you what language. I'm going to choose English again. And then English US for the keyboard layout. And it's a default keyboard. Now we need to create a username and a password. I'm going to call my user DT and I'm going to create a strong and complicated password for privacy reasons for the DT user. And then confirm the password and then finish setup. And now we're logged in and let me get a proper screen resolution here in this VM. So I'm just going to open up a terminal and I'm going to run xrander space dash s space 1920 by 1080 because the video driver I'm using in this virtual machine does support a 1920 by 1080 resolution there. So now when you first log into elementary OS 6.0, I will say I really like the wallpaper, very attractive wallpaper. As far as the actual desktop environment, as far as the translucent panel and the dock at the bottom, it looks exactly the same as elementary OS 5 did. So visually, as, as far as the desktop environment, it looks rather similar, right? It doesn't really look like they made any drastic changes. We do have our little greeter program here that'll go through some of the basics of elementary OS if I click next, we'll get a little slideshow like do we want a default light theme or do we want a dark theme? I can actually switch that right here in the little helper program. That's really cool. And then I'm going to click next. If you want to turn on the night light program, that's a good idea. For those of you that use a computer at night, it helps uh, reduce eye strain, especially when viewing a monitor late at night. So I'll click that on. And then do we want to automatically delete old temporary files and trash files? Uh, absolutely. And then connect online accounts. If I click that, it'll 
connect our online accounts. What are our options? CalDiv and IMAP, so our email accounts. I'm actually not going to be setting up an email inside this virtual machine, so I'll skip that for now. And then browse the App Center to get some apps. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And then ready to go. Open system settings to make any other changes we need to do. For example, if I click on desktop, we can change the wallpaper here. I actually quite like the default wallpaper. If I go to appearance, that's where we can change from light to dark themes. We can also change the accent color. Right now, the accent color is blue. If I wanted to, I could change it to purple. That looks rather nice or mint. Let me open up a program. Let me open up the file manager. Uh, the file manager is actually not in the dock. That is a rather strange choice because I would think the file manager is a program that you're going to use often enough. It probably needs to be in the dock, so I'm going to add it. Yeah, I like the dark theme. Uh, I don't see any minty highlights, though. Maybe uh, the file manager wasn't a good program to, to visually show that. I'm going to use the purple accents. We can also adjust the text size. We're, right now we're using the default text size, but if you wanted to make it smaller or larger or even larger, you can do that. You can also turn on dyslexia-friendly fonts. That's a really nice accessibility feature that's added. I really appreciate that the elementary team were, were thinking about those little details as far as universal access. Now, dock and panel, this, of course, the dock, it's at the bottom. This is the plank dock. Now, if I wanted to change some stuff in the dock, I think I could control and right click, yeah, and then go to preferences here. And I could actually change the position of the dock. Because typically, if I, I don't like docks, especially at the bottom of the screen, because most everything when you're uh, interacting with a computer, such as your web browser, think of the back button, the forward button, the home button, your search bars, and everything. Everything happens at the top of the screen, usually the top left hand side of the screen. You're always here. And to constantly be traveling to the center bottom for that dock to do things is really tough on your hand as far as your right hand for the mouse. It doesn't make sense these days for ergonomics and just for safety reasons, health reasons. You really don't want a bottom panel or a bottom dock. Put that thing over on the left is what I suggest for now, though, I will leave it in the default location at the bottom. You can change the size and honestly, I would probably make these icons a little smaller. For my screen, I, I think 36 point font or 36 pixel size icons actually makes a lot more sense because I could fit a lot more things to that dock now. Another thing we have a setting for is the panel translucency. Do you want a translucent panel or not? For me, I actually don't care for the translucent panel. Me personally, I would turn it off. But if you want to turn it on, uh, the cool thing about the translucent panel in elementary OS is they do have this kind of dynamic feature where if you make a, a window full screen, it turns the translucent panel back to a solid panel. And, and because visually that makes sense. You don't want to have that sliver of translucency at the top when you have something full screen. So I like, you know, how, how that works. You know, when you full screen a window, it changes the translucency, it turns it off, and it turns it back on when you unmaximize the window. Also, you can turn on and off the IntelliHide feature for the dock. The IntelliHide feature is what is set by default, is that any window that overlaps the dock, it causes the dock to hide itself. So if I make a window full screen, the dock goes away. If I unmaximize that window, the dock comes back. So let's go ahead and open up the elementary app center. So this is your software center, your app store, essentially. And one of the things that elementary does that's different than most distributions is they're really trying to do a lot with flat packs. Most of the elementary apps that come pre-installed are elementary's own apps that they develop and they package them as flat packs. And most of the stuff that you're going to find in the app center will be flat packs as well. I think all of the stuff you find in the app center is packaged as a flat pack. And uh, if we just want to search for something, let's go to the audio category. Right now, there's nothing displaying in the audio category other than music, which is Elementary's music app. It's already installed. So uh, communication, mail, which is already installed. That's Elementary's own application. I think what the problem here is, it's not showing anything other than the installed applications, is maybe we need to do like a fresh uh, update syncing the repositories. Let me open the terminal. So if I do super T to open the terminal and then let me zoom in here. I'll make the, uh, the terminal full screen here. Let's run a sudo apt update. Give it our sudo password. 
There may have been a way to actually update the repositories inside the App Center. I didn't see anything, though. The App Center, the graphical App Center, didn't look like there's no settings, menu, or anything like that here. It's very bare. But now, do I actually have more things to look at? No, I don't. Let me do Super T to open the terminal one more time. And now that I've updated the repositories, let's do a sudo apt install package kit. And once again, give it a sudo password. And now let me close the uh, terminal. Uh, the super key brings up key bindings. That's kind of cool. So anytime you want to figure out what the key bindings are inside elementary, just tap the super key and tap it again to make it go away. Uh, now that I installed the package kit program, now when I go into audio, does it actually show me anything else? No, it doesn't. I have no idea why I don't get anything displayed. Vim is not here. Emacs is not here. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the App Center. It's definitely broken, though, because it's only showing me installed applications. It's not showing me anything else. So essentially, it's rather useless. Uh, let me do a reboot and see if maybe it, we need to do a, a reboot after installing all of that. Uh, reboot, I guess, in elementary needs sudo privileges. On most distributions these days that use systemd as the init system, you can just do reboot without sudo, but I guess elementary wants people <laughs> to have elevated privileges to do a reboot of the system. All right, back to the login manager, and let's log in once again. And once again, I'm going to have to fix the screen resolution, so let me run the xrender command one more time close out of the terminal and let's run the app center one more time and let's see if yeah we still are only showing installed programs and nothing else i can't search for anything other than the programs that are already installed so yeah the app center uh at least inside this virtual machine is broken i don't know why that would be a virtual machine problem rather than I, I I don't know if that I, I'm assuming that would still be a problem even on physical hardware. I have no idea how to sync the App Center so it actually shows me things uh, because there's nothing to do inside the App Center. Like there's no menu, there's nothing going on. You can't right click here. It's just uh, like window features, but nothing. Yeah, there's just nothing to do here. Uh, it's a, a very bad <laughs> app center experience. Let me do a sudo apt install synaptic just so I have some way of installing software here on elementary. I'll install the synaptic package manager, which is really the best graphical package manager for Debian and Ubuntu and all distributions based on Debian and Ubuntu. Oh, wait. Well, that is really weird. Did you guys see? I, I guess some kind of automatic update was going on. And we actually have some operating system updates. Let's update all. So maybe the problem was it was waiting to do this system sync, this uh, repository sync in the background. And then it would have eventually worked itself out. I was just trying to rush it, I guess. And now the system is up to date. Let me close that. Let's see if now the App Center actually shows us things. Uh, let me go to home instead of default. If I go to the audio category, there's still nothing here except the music player. The communication category now shows two things, including one that I don't have installed, Iridium, which is a IRC client. And you do have the option to actually pay for software. So if you want to donate to the project, that is really cool. I like that feature. There's still hardly any software in this app center. The office category still doesn't have a, any kind of office suite. So there's no LibreOffice. Let's see, now could I find Vim? No, Vim is still not available. Emacs is still not available. Is GIMP here? No. So uh, a lot of software that I use on a daily basis, on a regular basis, I would have to go get from somewhere else. Now we did just install the Synaptic Package Manager. So let me search for the Synaptic Package Manager if I can type. Give it sudo privileges. And now we can actually install things from the standard Ubuntu repositories using the Synaptic Package Manager. Of course, you could do all this at the terminal as well, but the Synaptic Package Manager is a nice graphical package manager. I did a video about the Synaptic Package Manager a few weeks back. Check that out if you're confused how to use Synaptic. Let me go ahead and open up the web browser. It's just called web in the dock here, and I think this is based on GNOME's Epiphany browser. I go to the settings here, go to, I go to preferences. We do have some preference stuff. It really doesn't tell me if it's based on Epiphany or not. I thought 
I would get some kind of about information, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but we're just going to roll with the web browser here, whatever this happens to be. What I want to do is I want to go to flathub.org. Since they're using flat packs, you probably want to try to use flat packs as much as possible because chances are it's going to respect elementary's dark theme and light theme and, you know, things that snaps may not respect app images may not respect it's, it's not that snaps and app images won't respect it it's just the elementary guys probably haven't worked <laughs> on those package formats to get them to respect how elementary does things so it's best probably just to go to flathub.org and like i mentioned i was going to install gimp there you go and if i click install will it actually install it automatically here inside uh, elementary i don't know I would assume it would automatically open the App Center and maybe try to install it. Let's see what's going on here. It says, uh, I downloaded org.gimp.gimp.flatpack.ref. I double click it. Uh, do we want to install an untrusted app? Yes, I do. So I understand, I guess, the risk. Install anyway. And there you go. It's installing GIMP as a flat pack. So that's probably how you would go about sideloading programs that aren't in the App Center as far as flat packs that aren't in the App Center. Go to flathub.org and search for those flat packs and then just install them from the browser. And it finished installing that. It's asking, do I want to open the app? I will open the app, but I'm going to open it from the menu system because I want to see if it actually put that in the menu system already. Yep, it's here under applications. And let's see how the GIMP looks. I'm interested if the GIMP respects the dark theme that we set globally. It does not look like it does. So, as this is a problem. Uh, obviously, the Elementary's own apps, they respect Elementary's choice as far as a light theme or a dark theme. But these extra programs you install, they don't really respect that. And that kind of sucks. But let me see if Elementary's own programs, all of them, do respect the dark theme. The calendar does. The music player did. If I open the email client, I'm not going to set it up, but the email client looks like it supports a dark theme. And we had the photos application. All of that stuff looks like it respects the global dark theme, but I, I guess anything you uh, install yourself, any third party packages, I guess it doesn't matter whether they're dibs, flat packs, snaps, whatever, they're probably not going to respect the, uh, the appearance settings for elementary, and that's unfortunate. Let me open a terminal one more time and let's get a listing of all the flat packs that are installed on the system just to see. Yeah, it looks like all the elementary apps, uh, the standard elementary apps like uh, the web browser, which is GNOME Web, it's Epiphany, Events, which is the PDF reader. All of this stuff is packaged as a flat pack, the camera app, the calculator, the screenshot utility, and then of course GIMP, which we installed ourselves. Now being based on Ubuntu, Ubuntu usually has a, a Snap installed by default and, or enabled by default, and sometimes Snap's installed by default. I don't know if Elementary uses Snaps or not. If I do a Snap list, Snap is not installed. I'm kind of curious, if I do a sudo apt install snapd, Let's install a snap and see how it looks with the theming. So we just installed snapd, which is the snap daemon. It's what you need to install before you can actually install snap packs. And it already created the sim links and everything, so we're good to go. I could do a sudo snap install name of package now to install anything as a snap. And I think one of the things I want to install is a better terminal emulator. I don't know this terminal emulator, but it looks ugly. It has scroll bars. It has a, a tab. It has a tab open even when there's only one thing open. I don't know. That's, uh, that's completely wasted space, and it doesn't make any sense. And I don't think you can turn that off because you have a settings menu, which allows you to change the background color and to zoom in and out the text. And that's it. That's the only settings. Right click does nothing. So I can't disable the scroll bar, the tab bar. I can't do any of that like you can do in almost every other terminal emulator known to man. So let's do a sudo snap install. And I know Alacrity has a snap. So let's install the Alacrity terminal emulator. And it looks like Alacrity is a special kind of snap. By default, snaps are confined packages, meaning they don't have access to certain parts of the system for security reasons. But because Alacrity is a terminal emulator, it has to be able to break out of that confinement. It's what's called a classic snap. 
And to install these, you have to add the dash dash classic flag to the command. Don't worry, it's not a problem with alacrity as far as it's not insecure or a potential security issue. All terminal emulators, of course, need access to everything on your system because, you, I mean, that's what you're doing with the terminal is you're running these commands that can change system setting stuff. So that's why Alacrity has to be one of these classic snaps rather, rather than the standard snaps, which are sandboxed. It's probably why you, you really don't see terminal emulators packaged as flat packs because I don't think flat pack I think every flat pack is containerized, is sandboxed, and I, a terminal emulator just doesn't work in that kind of strict containment. And it took a couple of minutes for Alacrity to install as a snap, and now let me close out whatever terminal emulator this is, Elementary's own terminal emulator, which I really didn't care for at all just the few minutes I spent in it. And now Alacrity as a snap does not show up in the menu system. So I'd probably probably have to log out, log back in, or maybe reboot the machine for it to show up. But if I just type Alacrity, the full word, and execute Alacrity, yeah, it, it launches just fine. And this is Alacrity as a snap pack. And once again, it doesn't respect the global dark theme. So really, other than Elementary's own applications, everything else is still using a light theme, even though we enabled the dark theme globally. So that's kind of annoying. It's It's been this way for the last few versions of Elementary. And I don't know why this can't be fixed, because for me, it doesn't matter. I just want my applications that I need. I don't care how they look, but a lot of people are really OCD when it comes to appearance. And having some applications using a dark theme and some using a light theme, that's really going to tick off some computer users. So the elementary team really need to work on just get, getting the theming right for their applications. So this is Alacrity. If I did a snap list now, we can see that now we have three snaps. Uh, the snap D daemon, the core, which is needed. Uh, so th those are just installed when you enable snaps. And then the one snap that we actually installed, Alacrity. And of course, I can install Firefox as a snap and GIMP as a snap. All of those are also available as flat packs. Since Elementary is basing on flat packs, I'd probably try to use flat packs where possible. But if for some reason you can't find something as a flat pack, like Alacrity, I don't, I don't think they do terminal emulators as flat packs, you go grab that as a snap. So let me open up a terminal again. Now I could do Super T, but it's going to bring up that other <laughs> terminal emulator that I didn't like. So let me just execute Alacrity one more time from the run launcher. And let me zoom in in Alacrity. And is HTOP installed by default on Elementary? It is. And what kind of RAM are we using? I gave this virtual machine six gigs of RAM. It's using 850 megs. Now we've opened a lot of programs here in the last few minutes. So probably what I should do is actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reboot and see what HTOP is on a cold boot. We get our login manager. All right, and we're back here. Once again, Alacrity now has an icon. So now it actually shows up. I'm going to do an X-Rander to get our screen resolution back to 1920 by 1080. And now let's run HTOP on a cold boot. Yeah, 626 megs of the 6 gigs of RAM. That's rather light. That is in the same neighborhood as something like XFCE, KDE Plasma, which are kind of middling, uh, middle of the road desktop environments as far as RAM usage. Typically, XFCE is using, I don't know, 500 megs. KDE Plasma, five, 600 megs. Uh, Elementary's Pantheon desktop environment looks like it is uh, not using that much RAM. Not using, it is using a little bit of CPU, 38% of the CPU. I'm in a virtual machine though. Well, actually that's settled way down. I'm assuming that CPU spike where it was using a whole lot of CPU, was it doing the automatic updates because that really spikes the CPU when it uh, has to sync the repositories and check for updates. And of course, it's going to do that probably immediate uh, up on logging in. So that's probably what that was. And you saw, though, that it settled back down to using about three, four percent of the CPU. That's pretty normal. Let me right click on the desktop and I'm going to change wallpaper because let's take a look at the wallpaper packs because honestly, Elementary comes with some of the best wallpapers out there. I really like the default wallpaper, but they have uh, two variations on the default wallpaper. They have the darker one here, which would look great with the light theme. And of course you had the lighter one, which would look great with a dark theme, but that's 
That's really nice that they have two variations on the same uh, setting. That is rather cool. Some of the other wallpapers, since I'm using a dark theme, uh, I think actually this black and white photograph would look very nice. Yeah, I, I could use that. Of course, this here is a black and white with a little bit of red accent. That would look very nice with the dark theme. Yeah, really nice wallpapers. I'm going to go back to the default there. Overall, you know, Elementary has always looked rather clean and polished. It's very professional. It's kind of its own walled garden, like Mac OS, right? They present limited options. Limited options, which for somebody like me, the power user, I couldn't use Elementary OS because I've got to do other things, right? I would have to go install other package managers. I got to go install snaps and app images and things like that. And I'm going to go get software that maybe doesn't look quite right with Elementary's Pantheon desktop. And it's eventually going to frustrate me enough where I'm going to install another desktop environment or window manager and use that instead of Elementary's Pantheon desktop environment, which it's pretty much all they work on, right? <laughs> if I strip away the Pantheon desktop environment and all the elementary apps for another desktop environment with other apps, then why am I using elementary OS, right? It, that's, that's not the right distribution for me to use at that point. But for many people with basic needs, if you're a basic computer user, think about people that know nothing technical about computers. All they know is how to sit down and open up a web browser and surf the web. And that's all they do. They don't change themes. They don't change icon sets. They don't even change the default wallpaper that comes on their computer. And there's millions and millions of people out there. And for those kinds of people, things like the Mac OS is great for them. And things like elementary OS is great for them because it's really good out of the box. You know, this small little suite of software actually works. I mean, you can pretty much get everything done you want to get done inside elementary OS. And for the power user, they're probably going to want something like one of the Ubuntu flavors, the, the standard Ubuntu with GNOME, or even Kubuntu with KDE Plasma, which has a million customization options. Or Linux Mint Cinnamon is a very nice desktop environment. It's highly configurable. You're probably better served putting people on a distribution like that rather than elementary if they're a tinkerer. If they want to get under the hood and play around a little bit, they're not going to have a good time with elementary. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I'm talking about Ab C. Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul Wes, Akami, Allen, Chuck, Kurt, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Arion, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedor, Polydate, Raver, Red Prophet, Scott, Stephen, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick first look at Elementary OS 6.0, codenamed Odin, it would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to help support me, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Maybe I was a little harsh on that terminal.